In this tutorial, we will look at how you can use the laser feature of your CNC to add more detail to your project in a very interesting way. This is a truly hybrid project that is easily created with your Aspire software and laser CNC setup. We will start with a partially created project file, review what has been done, do a bit of basic sculpting, create a texture from a bitmap, and then add on some laser texture. In the end, we'll have a very unique project that will show off the power of your Aspire software with the laser module installed and a hybrid CNC setup. To get started, we are going to open up a file that came with your tutorial. So we're going to open up an existing file. You'll navigate over to your tutorials file and you'll find tigerface.crv 3D file. So we'll select that and we'll open that up. First of all, we'll have a look at our job setup. So we'll click the job setup settings here. It's a single sided job. The width is gonna be six inches. The height is six inches and the thickness is gonna be three quarters of an inch. Of course, we're using inches as our units. We're gonna zero off our material surface. Our datum will be set to the bottom left hand corner. We're gonna be using a very high modeling resolution because we will be doing some modeling in this particular tutorial and our appearance will be Canadian maple. We can just click cancel. Now let's have a look at our vector layers that we have set up. So we've got four different layers right now. We're gonna be adding more to those later. We have a zero plane layer, we have a bitmap layer, we have a layer number one and tiger outlines. We can access them here through our layers tab or we can use our layers drop down as well. Let's go back to our modeling tab again. Let's talk for a second about what I actually want to produce in the end. What I'd like to do is I'd like to take this original bitmap. I would like to trace some vectors around it so I can give it some very basic shape, 3D shape that is. And then I want to take the bitmap and turn it into a texture to apply to the top of my basic relief of the tiger's face. And then I would like to add on top of that some extra detail using our laser and all of this is going to fit inside of a dish. So if we take a look over here at my component tree, I have two component levels already set up, one called dish and one called tiger sculpt. Let's take a look first of all at the dish level first. So let's go to our 3D view and we'll expand our tree here and we'll take a look at what we have on this particular level. So here we've got a zero plane, which is the background here. And then we've also added to that or subtracted from that, excuse me, a flat round circle. And this flat round circle dish is included with your free clip art that you get with your Aspire software. So I just used that from your clip art library. Now this is great. So I want all of my tiger to fit inside of this particular dish. So if we take a look at our flat round circle and have a peek at what the shape height of this is, it's actually set to 0.26 of an inch. So I'm going to go in 0.26 of an inch into my three quarter inch material here, which I think will leave me all kinds of backing along with will give me a whole lot of relief as well in the size of a project. So let's close this down for now. Let's turn this back off again. Let's go back to our 2D view for a moment. And we'll take a look at one of our other layers that we have set up. And this is called Tiger Outlines. I turn that on. You'll see that I've got some outlines here and they're all in red. And what I did was I basically, and I wasn't being too careful to trace what I felt were different layers in the tiger's face. So for instance, if I piled up a bunch of sort of dome shapes on top of each other, using these vectors, I would get something that was similar to a tiger face. So I traced around the actual body here. I drew my ears, of course, they needed to be there. I drew this face vector, which essentially sort of isolates that area of the face and will let me puff it up a little bit. I drew this vector here because I knew that I wanted to sink that down a little bit into this other shape that I created. And then I knew on top of that, I wanted to add in this shape and then I want to add in a no shape. And then finally, I needed to add in a couple shapes for eyes. They don't need to be particularly accurate, just enough to give a little bit of an extra puff behind the eyes. Now to see what I did with those vectors, let's have a look at my tiger sculpt component 
level over here. And we'll switch to our 3D view and we'll turn this on. And so using those vector shapes, I created this very, very rudimentary model, which isn't very exciting, but it gives us some really basic detail. And you'll see again that we have the, the face shape that I puffed up. I took this shape, which is called face two, and I subtracted it just slightly out of that shape. And I added on top of that, this face three component, this nose component, and then we have the eyes on top of that and the ears were merged into the face in the background. So it's not very complicated. The only other thing that I did to make it look a little bit better is I used a little bit of fade. So for instance, with this particular nose piece that I have here in the middle, if we look at this component, you'll see that I've chosen to use some fade, 100% fade, and my anchor points are set from the tip of the nose to the top of the nose. I wanted to fade right down to nothing because what I noticed was happening when I started to add these to everything. I end up having a very strange face. I end up having everything kind of high here and straight across where really I wanted this sort of shape, just a very basic sort of shape, but I needed that sort of profile, 3D profile going on. So if I turn off my fade, let's just tilt that on its edge for a sec so we can see what happens. You'll see that my nose puffs up a little bit and I turn back on my fade and then it comes back down a little bit. And that little bit of extra added a lot to that. And I did that with this component and also with this component here, you'll see that I faded it as well. And we can, just to reassure you that I did do that, we can turn off the fade, and turn it back on again. Okay, so let's close this down. Let's look straight back down in our model again and we'll deselect all of our components. So the next thing we're gonna do is to create a texture, a 3D texture from the original bitmap. Now to do that, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a brand new level over here for that component to sit on. So we're gonna deselect our tiger sculpt. We'll just shrink up those trees there for us. And we'll right click on either one of these two levels and we'll choose insert a new level. And we'll call this new level, to rename it, Tiger Texture. And then we will tile our views just so we can see what's gonna happen here. Let's have a quick look at our bitmap layers or our layers manager here. And we are gonna make sure that we go over some of these other layers that are here. And you'll see that there's a zero plane layer set up for us and that was created when we created our zero plane that I showed you in with my dish level. Uh, and then we also have layer one that was created automatically by our software in the first place. So that's perfect. So let's select this bitmap and using our create a component from selected or imported bitmap, we can go ahead and create a texture from that. So the software has gone ahead and looked at this bitmap and took all of the lighter pixels and given us some high relief and any of our darker pixels got some very low relief. So the top of the ears is very low and then this white areas on the tiger's face when eyes are high. Now this has given us a very interesting texture. It's not a true relief. Oh, it is a relief, but it's not a true relief in the sense of a ball relief, but it can be used to add some interesting detail to our relief that we already have basically set up. So let's look straight down on that. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna select our bitmap and we wanna move that bitmap. And you'll see that in our 2D view now, our colored bitmap has turned to a grayscale. And that's because this is actually the grayscale representation of this component, not the original bitmap. And we're gonna move this to its own layer. Okay, so we're gonna create a brand new layer and we're gonna call this Tiger 3D Texture. And that's okay. And now you'll see that up here in our Layers Manager, we have a new layer and we can turn off the original bitmap for a second and we can choose this as our active layer and we can click outside. So now this is a bit of a hard edge looking thing. It's not as nice and smooth as what we would like. So let's select that. And then we are gonna quickly apply the smoothing filter to it. And we're just gonna do a very basic and very quick 
This is all very subjective. I'm just gonna go somewhere around there and everything kind of smooths out. But you'll see that what I get from my bitmap is these raised whiskers, which I didn't model in. I get the raised details around the eyes, which I didn't model in. So this in some cases gives me some nice new relief, but in other cases it is a bit unusual, like the top of his nose here shouldn't be a heavy recess, but we're not gonna worry about that. In the end, it'll machine quite nicely, I think, in the end, once it's all said and done. So I like that, so let's just click OK. And for now, let's have a quick peek with a full 3D view here and see what happens when we add back in our tiger sculpt. When we do that, you'll see that the face pops out. We'll do that again, hide that. And we can show it, you can see how it pops out a little bit. Now I think that our texture is a bit too heavy, so let's select our texture component here and let's just scale that down a bit, down to about half of that probably would be adequate. Press our space bar and there we have it and we'll close that. I think that looks okay. We'll look straight down on our 3D view again. Now, one of the things we are gonna notice, and you probably noticed as well, is that there's some hard seams here or hard areas of relief that happen when our different shapes kind of merge into each other. So we can easily fix a lot of that by doing, again, some very basic sculpting. So let's hide our tiger texture and let's leave our relief that we see here. Let's expand that a little bit. We're gonna make sure that we choose our proper layer here, which is gonna be our tiger outlines. Let's turn that on again. Turn off our texture just for a second and we'll go back to here again. Now I would like to sculpt what I see here, but as a complete solid object. So to do that, I can choose to create a component from the visible model. So having the tiger sculpt layer selected, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. You see, I get a brand new component and it's added into this. So it's added on top of all the other pieces that I have there. So let's turn off all of these other bits we don't need anymore. We just need this one here, and that's one solid piece. I can't select any of those individual components now. And let's go into our sculpting. And again, this is gonna be some very basic stuff. Really what we wanna do is we wanna fix this seam here. We wanna get rid of some of these hard edges. And then we wanna fix a little bit of what's going on here. So to start out with, we're just gonna use our basic smooth tool and we're just gonna smooth, see how far we get with some of this smoothing here. We'll turn up our strength a little bit. We'll just kind of smooth it down a bit. That looks okay. We can change it to smooth and only raise only, which means that we won't get any of these dips here. We'll get a nice smooth seam. It'll pull pixels up. It won't push them down. That looks pretty good there. That's great. Go back to normal again. And we'll quickly just, I'm using my mouse by the way. Typically I'd use my Wacom tablet, but I wanted to show you how easy this was to do without it. We'll just kind of zip around there a little bit, go over these edges, make them smooth. We'll fix some of that. Looks okay, I think it looks much better than what it did before. That's great. And now if we want to do a bit of smudging, you can also smudge. Normal way of doing that is give myself a pretty decent diameter of a brush, turn down the strength a little bit and only choose to raise only. And so what I can do is I can kind of blend in some of this. So it's just moving some of those high Part, just like pushing Play-Doh around a bit. It'll give me more of an organic edge there. Won't look so hard in the end, that looks okay. I think I'm pretty happy with that. I can kind of just maybe do a little bit more around the edge here. I'm happy with that and we'll just click okay. And that looks great. Now let's take a look again at the 3D texture added to that. And we do that, you'll see that that looks much better. Those hard edges there are gone now. And I think that looks pretty good. These hard edges are fine, I feel right now, because they do define that edge that when it moves into its body. And in the end, I think that's gonna look okay. So there we go, look straight down that again. And let's move into our next step.
Now the end goal here is to make sure this fits all inside of our dish without poking up proud of our material. We don't want the nose of our tiger to be higher than the edge of our dish. So let's turn back on our dish for a moment and have a look and see what we have here. So just luckily, because we have in our view our modeling plane is turned on, we have this sort of hazy area here and that is the representation of our modeling plane and the tiger is below that. So that's a good sign. But that doesn't say whether or not we have some extra room that we actually could um, scale up our tiger and make the best use of the space that we have there or the best use of our material. So to do that, we already know ahead of time because we looked before the depth of our dish is a quarter inch or just a little bit over a quarter inch. It's 0.26 of an inch deep. So if we make sure that our relief, our basic relief of our tiger head plus our texture is less than 0.26 of an inch, it should fit inside of our dish. So to do that, what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and turn off our dish for a second. And then we're going to use our um, scale Z height of the model. And so this is going to take what we see as our visual model, whatever we see in our 3D view, our composite model, it's going to scale it to a certain height for us. So let's click that. And right now it's 2, 0.24. So it is not as tall as our dish is deep, but we could actually get a little bit more of this if we wanted to. So let's set this to an exact height. Now we can go ahead and just use our slider here if we'd like to, but I know the exact height I want. So we're gonna use this, we're gonna set exact height. We're gonna put in 0.255, which is a little bit less than the 0.26 and we'll click apply and we'll close this down. And now we're gonna get a almost perfect fit into our dish. So if we click okay, we turn back on our dish again, you'll see that it still fits inside the dish. And we would know if it didn't because we would have some areas of our tiger would be the same color as what we see here on the outside of our dish. But everything looks really good. We can look straight back, we can look straight back down on that again. And I'm pretty happy with that. So the next thing we need to do is we need to deal with all of this extra relief that we have outside of our dish. We don't want that to be in our final view of our project. So let's go over how we can get rid of that. There's a couple of different ways we can do that, but the way we're gonna do it in this particular case is to set up a new level and we're gonna use it as a multiply level. And that way we can selectively multiply out any of this stuff that we don't really want. And also we can fade the edge of our actual texture as it goes into the bottom of this dish. So to do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hide the tiger sculpt and we'll just shrink up that tree a little bit. We'll hide our dish and we'll also hide our tiger texture and we'll shrink that up. Let's right click on our tiger texture level and we are gonna insert a new level. And we're gonna right click on that again and we're gonna rename that multi, which stands for multiply dish. We'll press enter to accept that. And then what we're gonna do is copy the zero plane and the flat round circle that we have down here up into that level. So we are going to, while holding down our shift key, we're gonna select both of those. Then we're gonna hold down our control key and drag. And that'll make a copy of those into this level here and we can hide this one and show that one and there we have our copy of our zero plane and the copy of our flat round circle and now just for to keep things a little bit tidier we're going to rename these and we're going to get rid of this amended one at the end that's just so that we would know that we actually made a copy of that let's just rename that and there we have it okay now the next step we're going to do is we need to invert this flat round circle and we're lucky because it's just a subtracted component of a positive shape. So let's right click on that and we'll change our combine mode to add. Now in order for this to work, we need to make sure that this flat round dish is set to a one as a shape height, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and do that and we'll choose to change the properties of this and we'll change it to one, press the space bar and we'll close this down and then we'll have a look what we have. So what we have is a level 
that has a the lowest height is zero and the tallest or the highest is one. And if we change this to a multiply level, then it will multiply every pixel underneath each pixel that's here, the corresponding pixels, by the number that we have here. So in, for the ease of explaining, we're going to take the height here, which is zero. And so any pixels underneath this area will be multiplied by zero, which will give us a zero shape height. And in this area here where it's one, it will multiply all the pixels underneath that by one and it will stay at its original height. And then everything in between will be multiplied by the numbers in between so you get a nice shape. So what we'll do is we're gonna leave it just as it is and we're gonna turn back on all of our Sculpting, we're not gonna turn back on our dish for a minute. We're just gonna turn on those two layers to show you what's gonna happen. Now, right now, this is not a multiply level, it's set to add, but let's right click on that. We'll change our combine mode to multiply and we'll see what happens. And there we have it. So all of that has gone away or has been temporarily multiplied out. If we turn back on our dish again, we'll see that that puts our tiger back in the dish again. So I'm really happy with that layout the way it is. So to demonstrate the difference between the 3D tooling and then the addition of the laser tool path, we're going to go ahead right now and create the traditional CNC tooling that we need to cut this out. So the first thing we're going to need to do is have a vector set up so that we can isolate our tooling only to cut where that dish is. So to do that, what I'm going to do is flip to my 2D view. I'm going to go up to our layer manager and we're going to deselect or turn off our Tiger 3D texture, turn on layer one and make sure that's our active layer. And that will show us our actual um, circle dish bitmap representation here. So and also when I select it, you'll see that it's been selected in my component tree. And now I can simply just go ahead and create a vector boundary around the selected component. And there we have it, it's that easy. And then we have that vector now. So let's tile our views. Let's bring up our tool pass tab. We'll pin that down. Let's just do that again so that we end up being able to see all of our view. And we can hide our other tabs if we want to. And again, refresh that view. Now, let's start off by checking off our or checking out our material setup. And the thickness of our material is 0.75 of an inch. We're going to have our XY datum set to the bottom left. Our Z0 is going to be on our material surface. Our model position is going to be at the very top of our material. And then our rapid Z gaps and start position are set and are safe and appropriate for our machine. Make sure you double check that and make sure that it's proper for yours. And we'll click OK. And we'll create our 3D roughing tool path. It's super simple. We're going to use an end mill. We're going to use our selected vector boundary to isolate our tooling. We're going to have zero boundary offset. We don't want to go outside of that circle at all. We're going to leave a little bit of machining allowance behind. We'll use Z-level roughing. There's no ramp plunge moves and we'll just call this 3D roughing. Delete out the one and we'll calculate that. And we'll preview that visible tooling. And that looks really good. At least that's what I expect to have happened. So let's close that out. Let's go ahead and use our 3D finishing tool path. So we're gonna use a 1 8 inch ball nose end mill. So that's perfect the way it is. We're gonna use our selected vector, which has already been selected in our 2D view. We're gonna use a, our machining strategy will be an offset strategy. So it's gonna work from the way out and work its way around and around and around. And we're gonna add a little bit of step over retract in there. That way our tool will actually pick up before it moves on to the next radial tooling line. And that way we'll get less of these, uh, with less possibility of having any little marks that go from the inside to the outside of our dish shape. And that looks great. And we'll call that 3D finish and we'll calculate that. Preview that visible tool path. Look straight down on it, make it full screen. Now that doesn't look all that bad. That looks pretty good but there really isn't any indication at all of the dark and light areas. We could try our best to stain that in or maybe even paint that in, but that would be incredibly difficult. Along with, we'd like to add in some of these extra little details. You do see some fur here, but it would be nice if we could see a little bit more of that, or at least have a bit of differentiation in the color of our wood. So let's use our laser tooling to make that happen. So 
Let's close this down. Look straight back down to our job again. We'll flip back over to our drawing tab. Okay, so in order to use our laser picture tooling strategy from our laser module, we need to have a bitmap to actually use to laser. Now we could use the full bitmap, but obviously that wouldn't work because we don't want these areas to be lasered. And I think what will look the best is if we only laser the part that's on the tiger and leave the background the way it is. So to do that, we're gonna to need to do, so in order to do that, we're gonna to need to take a couple steps. So let's flip over to our 2D view. Let's press F on our keyboard to fit that to our screen. And we're gonna to need to copy some vectors that we already have. So let's drop this down. Let's turn on our tiger outlines. And you'll see that we have a gray component here. If we look at our modeling tree and we click that, you'll see that that is the actual zero plane that we copied down here. Unlike the original zero plane, it's not automatically hidden by our software. So we can hide that if we would like to, but I'm gonna leave that on, but I just wanted you, you to be aware that that was there. So now what I wanna do is I want to copy all the vectors that I need, or I think I'm gonna to need to make the outline of only the tiger part of my bitmap. So I know for sure I need this line here, I need this line and I need the two ears. And that should be all I need for the actual tiger to give me the perimeter of that. And then I need this circle as well. So we're gonna hold down our shift key and we'll select that. So we have all those selected. Let's right click on those. And we are gonna copy those to a new layer. And we're gonna call this tiger laser texture. And we're gonna give that a green color. That way we know what it is and we can click okay. Now we can go ahead and hide all of these and we only wanna see this laser texture. Now the last thing we need is an actual copy of the bitmap. So let's turn on our bitmap layer for a second and we'll select the bitmap, right click on that and we're also going to copy that to our tiger laser texture layer. Once that's done, then we're gonna go ahead and hide that. Nothing has really changed, but we do wanna make sure that we have the tiger laser texture selected. Now when I see nothing has changed, we actually have a copy, but when I turned off the original tiger texture, it didn't go away. It stayed because there's now a copy of it here. So now we're going to need to go ahead and get one single vector to crop this bitmap with. So to start with, we're going to select all of these vectors that make up the perimeter of our tiger's head. And we are going to go over to our drawing tab. With those selected, we're going to go over here and we're going to weld those together. And you'll see that now we have one continuous outline, which is perfect. Now we're gonna select this welded vector that we just made, hold down our shift key and grab this circle. And we are only gonna keep what's inside the circle. So keep the overlap. So we'll select that. And there we have that. Now we can choose this vector, holding down our shift key, select the bitmap, and we can use our crop bitmap tool. And we'll only be left with the bitmap that's inside of our actual outline that we have. And that's what we need. And that's all we need for our laser tooling. So let's flip back over to our tool pass tab and let's tile our views and have a look at that. Let's fit this to our screen. Perfect. Now let's make sure that we only have the bitmap selected. So we're gonna off click everything and then select just the bitmap. And we are gonna go and choose our laser picture strategy. Now we have another video that we created for our laser module, which is called the laser photo plaque. And that will actually go through all of these different options in depth. So for this one, we're just gonna choose a couple of the basic settings and see what the results are that we get. So the first thing we need to do is select the settings for our laser. And we're gonna be doing this in hardwood, so that's already selected for me. And I wanna make sure I choose the picture settings. And these are the picture settings I have set up, and that's what we'll start out with. So we'll select that. Now I have the option again to temporarily edit these just for this tool path. I don't wanna do that. I've got these settings right here that I can sort of choose very quickly or change very quickly as I go, but right now we'll leave them as they are. I can choose, of course, a raster laser etching if I'd like to. I can choose a hatch. I can choose selected vectors and I can dither in either the raster or the hatch if I would like to. And that gives me a nice newspaper quality, which in this case does look pretty nice. So we're gonna go with hatch. We're gonna go with the dithered image effect. We're gonna make our density about this, about 0 0.015. And we are gonna rename this 
laser picture, and we're going to project that onto our 3D model. And this is what makes this so exciting, is that we can actually project our laser tooling onto our 3D model. And when we save it off, our post-processor will change the power values as it moves across the image so that it will burn at the right height on our 3D model that we have already cut. So that's great. And we can go ahead and we're not going to save out our toolpath from here. We're actually going to calculate that. And then we are going to preview our visible toolpath and we'll see what we get. Let's take a look at that close up in the full view. And that looks pretty neat. And you can see that we have this nice 3D component. And on top of that, we've lasered onto it this nice dithered pattern that really, really, really helps to bring out the tiger and make it look really good. Along if we get some details that weren't quite cut when we did our 3D tooling. And of course, we'll have that burnt look in the end on top of our wood. And I must say, that looks pretty cool and what a great effect. And this is one of the amazing things that you can do with your traditional CNC tool, your added laser, and our laser module with Aspire.